Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So today I want to talk about load balancing. Now it's important to understand when we're talking about load balancing, we're not talking about a specific product. We're not even talking about a specific technology. This is more a concept, right? So when you're looking to build out a new infrastructure, or if you're looking at the infrastructure that you have, this is the type of thing where you go, hmm, you know, this idea of load balancing, could we implement a load balancing for our servers to provide more re redundancy or better performance for our end users? And then past that point, you go out and you figure out what, out what technology you would actually want to use and then from there you would figure out one of the many 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 products that are available so we're talking about load balancing we're simply talking about a concept here um, so the idea behind load balancing is just very simply that you have a number of servers that are more or less configured identically uh, in order to provide services to the end user to the client computers that are coming to them uh, so many times when you hear about load balancing you'll hear about this uh, for websites sites or for e-commerce companies, right? So basically, if you go to amazon.com, obviously amazon.com at this point in time is not run on one physical server. They have lots and lots and lots of servers that are spun up or physical machines that are providing the website and you simply get routed to one of those machines in order to look at the website uh, based off of whatever rules that they have set up. And so when we're talking about load balancing, all we're talking about is we have these multiple servers and then as, as users try to come to your website or try to access the service, they're then just routed to one or another and they're trying to balance the load across all of those servers in order to give the best performance uh, to the end user. Now, back in the day, uh, you know, if you had an Amazon.com or an eBay or whatever, uh, that might have been run on one physical box, right? So you have one physical server, you configure it however you want to configure it, you build your website, you open it up to the world, and then everybody starts coming to your server. And the problem with that is not just that the CPU fan can fail, and if the CPU fan fails in your server, then you know, nobody can get to your website anymore because your server is down. Uh, not only did you have that problem, but you actually had the problem of overutilization. What happens if, you know, whatever uh, website that you've created or e-commerce company that you've created becomes so amazingly popular, everybody in the world is trying to come to your website, um, and then all of a sudden, your server only has whatever hardware resources it was built with, and so basically, people try to overutilize those resources. They try to use more resources than the server physically has to offer, and then you can start getting some really weird problems. Session timeout errors, basically connections getting dropped, weird, weird kind of stuff can happen. And so that's one of the big issues if you use only one server is that, again, if that server actually gets overutilized, you can run into a problem. And so that's where you use load balancing. And so load balancing, you have numerous different servers. Uh, traffic is routed to the servers based off of whatever rules you have. Therefore, not everybody is going to one single server. Um, and so you don't have to worry about one single server being overloaded. Uh, when you think about why you would use load balancing in the real world, uh, one of the primary reasons you would use load balancing is fault tolerance, right? So if you have one server, if that server crashes or anything else, um, then basically your website or the service is down. So if you have numerous servers all providing the exact same service, traffic is getting routed. If one of those servers fails, it doesn't really matter because the traffic will just keep getting routed to all of the other servers. One of the things I, can, I will also say is if you have a, a, a load balanced system, you have a load balanced cluster, one of the nice parts about this too is it makes migrations and upgrades a hell of a lot easier, right? Uh, because basically what you can do is, you know, you have the servers that are running and they're from let's say three or four years ago you get the money to be able to upgrade servers you can go out you can buy the new fancy servers you can configure the first server you know how you want it you can plug it in 
and then you can decommission then you can decommission one then you spin up the next server you plug that in then you decommission one then you spin up the next server and so if you have this load balance configuration what's really nice is as hardware improves uh, you are able to just kind of like plug and play servers into the load balance configuration and you generally don't have significant downtime uh, beyond that you get the hardware uh, performance out of uh, servers if you have the, the servers load balance um, as users come to a server again they're obviously going to be utilizing the hardware resources and so if users are coming to servers that have fewer users currently using them then they will get more performance out of the servers so again so you can have numerous servers set up as users go they always go to the server that has the least number of users on it so they get a better performance out of your website and that may sound like a joke that may sound like yeah whatever but again even even websites nowadays if you if you have pictures on the websites if you have other things going on you have code running in the background again you have php or ruby or something like that running on your website um, if you have a lot of users coming to one server they may all see slower performance based off of the load on that one particular server so hard Hardware performance really does matter. Uh, then you run into network performance. So one of the cool things about load balancing is don't think of load balancing as simply having all the servers in the exact same server room or even in the same building. You can have your servers spread all around the world uh, or in the country or even in your city, something like that. And with load balancing, what can happen is depending on what system you have is that users can get routed to wherever their closest server is. So, so the latency and the speed will be best for your end users if they go to the closest physical server and so if you're using load balancing that's one of the things you can do with load balancing is if I'm if I'm in the Baltimore area I'll get routed to the server in New York City if I'm in Tokyo I'll get routed to you know the server in Tokyo and so that will give me a better performance from the website and again one of the things you have to think about from something like a website or a lot of these services is they can synchronize and they can copy data in the background so all the servers are the exact same copies right and so basically by being able to go to the closest server i'm getting the exact same website as somebody else i'm getting the exact same experience somebody else would get but i get that better performance because it's closer to me the final thing that you can do is you can also do a b testing with load balancing which can be useful in the real world so when we talk about a b testing basically what that is is you know some people see the a version of let's say a website and some people see the b version of a website and you can test Test to see how how people interact with those two different websites uh, do people stay on one longer than the other do people buy more stuff on one versus the other one of the things you can do if you have load balancing set up is you could have four of the servers all with the a configuration let's say a website configuration and then you can have the fifth server with the b configuration and then people will just automatically get routed to whichever server some of them will drop onto that fifth server that has that b configuration and then you can see how those people interact with the website uh, again do they stay there longer do they buy more things do they leave you know is it a worse worse website uh, that type of thing so those are some of the things to be thinking about with load balancing and why a load balancing is valuable so with that let's go over to the whiteboard and I'll explain a little bit more of this kind of draw some things out uh, to give you a better idea of what we're talking about here with load balancing so let's talk about the different types of load balancers again uh, load balancing is not a specific product nor it is, is it even a specific technology it's more an overall concept and way of thinking about how to build your infrastructure so as such there, there's different ways you can go about actually getting load balancing accomplished so the one the, the way that you may think about and the, the old-fashioned way that a lot of people still use is that you have a physical piece of load balancing hardware so you can purchase this from Cisco or Citrix or any number of, of companies uh, uh, that sell load balancing hardware and what happens is essentially you connect your servers to that piece of load balancing hardware and then when users uh, try to get to your website or whatever service that you're providing they will then they will hit they will actually hit the load balancer first and then the load balancer will route them to whatever server is most appropriate for them so if you have you know one user and connects again it'll 
they'll go to uh, the first server. The next person who connects will then go to the second server. The next person who connects will go to the third server, uh, so on and so forth. And so basically that, that physical lo load balancer will be able to see how much, oops, will be able to see how much traffic is going back and forth uh, to the different servers and then be able to determine the best server to send the end user to. So there's physical hardware load balancers out there. Uh, then past that, one of the things that you should look at is see if the, uh, the service or if the software that you're using has load balancing already built into it. So if you deal with something such as Microsoft Active Directory, so you create an Active Directory cluster of domain controllers, right? So these are all your DCs. Uh, basically, uh, Active Directory has load balancing already built into it, right? So if you're a user, and you're back at the home office and you go to log in, you'll get routed to whichever domain controller is most appropriate for you at the moment. Uh, but also within uh, Active Directory, you have something called sites. And so with sites, what'll happen is your user out at a site, so out at a remote office, they will then try, if they try to log in, they will be directed to the local, to the site specific Active Directory server uh, to log in so that they get the best performance. Now, if for some reason that is down, how Active Directory works is then they will then get routed to back to the home office or wherever another Active Directory server is so that they can then get their credentials and they can actually be able to use the, the, the network and all the uh, resources. And so one thing to be thinking about when, if you're thinking about load balancing is looking at your software and seeing does, does it actually have load balancing already built into it. So things like Active Directory, other types of software out there may have load balancing built into it. Then the final way that you can deal with load balancing is of course AAS, because everything's as a service now. I don't know, what do you call it, LBAS? load balancing as a service. Anyways, if you're dealing with a company such as Cloudflare, uh, there's other companies out there, they can actually provide uh, load balancing services for you, which can be very useful. So generally with this, what you're going to be using is you're going to be using a, a, a URL. Uh, so let's say, I don't know, failednormal.com. And so what you're going to do is basically you're going to direct your users uh, to that failnormal.com. And then what happens is Cloudflare, you set the configurations up in Cloudflare for all the different servers that you have providing, let's say the website failnormal.com. And so when a user goes to failnormal.com, they will be routed to Cloudflare. Cloudflare has a configurations for all the different servers within that load balance cluster. And so users will simply get routed again to whatever the most appropriate server is. And so with this, you don't even have to buy hardware or anything else. The other nice thing with something like Cloudflare is again, it can be geographic. So if there's a server that is close to you, what happens is you go to something like failnormal.com, which actually resolves into Cloudflare. Cloudflare sees what your IP address is, sees where your location is, and then goes, oh, you know, we have the server right here that's close to this user, so we're gonna route you to this, this server, and then you can communicate with the, the, the closest server so that you get the best performance out of it. So these are the different ways that you can go about getting load balancing services. Again, you can get the hardware. So the hardware type is the way a lot of people think about it. You can have it actually built in, again, with things such as Active Directory, or now something you should really be looking at, again, is this whole as a service model. You can go to Cloudflare, there's other you know service providers out there. And basically with this, you're gonna be using that domain main name uh, in order to, for people to be able to try to connect to the service and then they will get routed to whatever is closest. And so these are the different types of load balancing that you'll be dealing with. So that was a basic overview of load balancing for you. We'll talk about load balancing more when we start talking about actual specific products. But again, what I was trying to explain to you today is more that concept, right? There's a lot of different ways of actually accomplishing load balancing, uh, just from, again, the as a service model, whether you're gonna use hardware, whether it's actually built into the software that you're already using. And then with that, there's just a whole bunch of different products out there. So we'll talk about load balancing more as we deal with specific uh, products 
projects and as we deal with specific uh, products, but I wanted to give you this idea. Uh, now, one of the things that I would say is I think load balancing is one of those tools and one of those concepts that is still underutilized for the modern world. So again, uh, hardware used to be very expensive. If you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy a server, it was gonna cost you five to $10,000. So obviously from a personal level and from an organizational level, uh, you might not have been doing load balancing in the past simply because hardware was so bloody expensive, right? You know, if you're talking about five to $10,000 per machine, then that means every machine is going to cost you another five to ten thousand dollars, and you run into real economic, you know, uh, problems with that. You know, you have to do that whole cost-benefit analysis. Well, now that the price of hardware has come down so much, it really makes a lot more sense to be thinking about doing load balancing for environments. Again, instead of spending, uh, you know, going out there and buying the best server you can possibly buy for ten thousand dollars. Really, if you go out and bought $2,500 servers, you might really give a hell of a lot better performance to the end users. You have better fault tolerance if there's any issues, uh, and you can do a lot more with it. So this is one of the things to be thinking about with load balancing is just realize, you know, we're no longer dealing with the old fashioned way of doing things, the expensive way of doing things. And so maybe with the modern price points, doing something like load balancing makes a lot more sense, uh, especially when you start thinking about the virtual world. So you can go to DigitalOcean or Amazon or any company at this point and be able to spin up uh, VPS, uh, virtual private servers, uh, instances. And you can have those in different servers uh, throughout the country or the world. So a lot of uh, these cloud service providers, they have different regions around the world. And so one of the things to be thinking about is, is again, even in that virtual environment, you use load balancing. So basically that people get directed to whatever the closest uh, data center is to them, and then they will get a better performance even out of a virtual private server. And so these are some of the things to be thinking about um, now that the cost has come down and there's so many more you know options out there that are available for you. So that's basically all I've got to say about load balancing. As always, I enjoy doing this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.